But I'm not one to make that promise. Amen. But I will say that God will have his way in this place on today. Those that will pray with me now. Thy word success, spirit of holiness, on us descend. God grant me the power that makes preaching easy. God hide me behind thy shadow. Lord, allow your spirit to fill this place. For God, I'm only your mouthpiece, and the words I speak are yours. So Lord, I ask that you have thine own way, for I am the pot, you are, and I am the clay. God, prepare your people for your word on today. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Turn once again to me, with me now, to the book of Titus, the second chapter. It's already been read previously in your hearing, but just in case you didn't get here in time to hear it, turn with me now to the book of Titus the second chapter. And I only want to point out one or two things, starting at the third verse and just a portion of the fourth. And it reads, Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good, and so train the young woman. The subject this morning is a godly mother. A godly mother. Whether your name is mother, ma, mama, mommy, GG, TT, Yaya, or Nana, there is something special and powerful about that name. For one thing, it's special because not everyone gets that name. And it's special because you only have one. Our mothers were the first ones we knew. They're the front seat drivers, and they aren't even driving. Well, what do I mean, preacher? <laughs> Slow down, you're going too fast. Where are you going? Well, you, you know, you gotta make a left turn so put your left signal on. Slow down. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. And they're our first seatbelt fasteners. See, if there's any in here that know what I'm talking about, you understand that when you're in the car, maybe somebody cuts you off. Maybe you're going too fast and you have to cut on brakes immediately. There go that hand. <laughs> Anybody know this hand right here? <laughs> Don't be in the front seat while you're driving because that hand is, is coming out. Our first seat belt fastener. Our mothers took care of us, nurturing us as babies. They taught us to be respectable, saying yes ma'am, and no ma'am, yes sir, and no sir. They taught us also to respect our elders. See, we weren't raised to call someone older by their first name. There had to be an auntie or an uncle or some kind of so-and-so or even a Mr. or Mrs., but what you won't do 
is calling by their first name. They were there at even at every developmental stage in our lives. They try to be the best and give only the best to their families. When God made one man, the scriptures should have included with many hats. <laughs> We are the cooks, which is why some of you can't wait until I give the benediction just to go to mama's house. We are the nurses. Remember when you fall and scrape your knee or cut your finger or something would happen and out comes that bionic spit. <laughs> oh, y'all know what it is. Oh, come on, baby. What's the matter? Come let mama kiss it for you. Make you feel better. And truth be told, it still hurt. <laughs> you might as well say amen, but when they ask, you, know, you make you feel better, are you all right now? You say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was something about that bionic spit that just seemed <laughs> to make everything right in the world. See, the Bible says that we are the helpmates. So we help balance the books. We help pay the bills. We help to save, but we also help to spend it. Mm -hmm. See, that's why for some of those that are married, they have to hide the bags in the trunk <laughs> or they put it way in the back of the closet and pull it out one at a time like they done had it all along. Mm, baby, no, this ain't new. No, you don't remember this from last such and such and when I wore it then? Because you, cause you're trying to lie, but you know, good and well, it's brand new. Hmm. We can juggle better than anybody's business. We work a full-time job, go to school, pay the taxi cab driver, go into rehearsal or that appointment. We cook dinner, wash clothes, do homework, get baths done, put a load of clothes in the wash and still have time to catch up on that show. They are the biggest cheerleaders in public offenders. A godly mother is a mother to all. The tree of life, some may call it, or better known as the switch, was a mother's best friend. Ain't that right, Mary Allen? Mary Allen, are you in the building? If your child is acting up, you better believe not only will your child get the licks, but when you get home, if you ain't home, then your mother going to back it up with some more. Amen? Somebody. Mothers were the first teachers of time. See, she understood, yeah, you can go and play outside, but you better be home when the... Oh, somebody know what I'm talking about. They taught us the reason for the answer, why? And it's because I said so. And taught us that when our name was called, it meant to come and see what I want. See, a good mother was crazy and bipolar all at the same time. She'd give you a whooping and while she whooping you, she explained why she whooping it to you, and then you better not cry. <laughs> or maybe you got one of them mothers that'll whoop you and then <laughs> act like everything's all right. <laughs> Didn't I tell you that? I tell you that. Get in if you understand. You understand? Girl, hey, girl. <laughs> Uh, I'm fine, girl. Yeah, mm, just another ordinary day. Living my life like it's gold. <laughs> Bipolar and crazy. <laughs> See, there's nothing that a mother wouldn't do to make sure that you are cared for. They've made many sacrifices for you and me just to keep us going. It may have been missing out on meals just to make sure you had something to eat. It may have meant working overtime to make some extra money so that you could get the things that you needed to survive. Nevertheless, most of us that are grown can look back and see that it was all done out of mother's love. 
God created you to be godly because he is godly. The same characteristics of a mother is the same one God possesses. God understood when he gave Eve the title, but most importantly, the responsibility that you have to be equipped with some different stuff. Because of God, you know how to make a dollar out of 15 cents. But didn't God divide two fish and five loaves of bread and fed millions? Okay, I'm going to leave that right there. Because of God, you know how to rotate a closet and make it look like you just bought it and even coordinate your outfit with your man, your boo, or your baby. God gave you the ability that even without a man, you can still bring home the bacon fried up in a pan and even eat the fruits of your labor. For there are some homes without a father and there are other homes without a husband, but nevertheless, life has to go on. God gave you the strength to endure unto the end. The end for some may have resulted in perhaps a divorce, but no matter, you handled it, you signed them papers, and then you turned it over to the one who can do anything but fail. I'm talking about a godly woman whom God gave what they say sugar, spice, and everything nice. To be able to be strong during adversity, soft when one is hurting, and faithful until the very end. As a mother, I thank God for the trials and the tribulations. I thank God that he built me not for tough, but God tough. And though though on this journey it gets tough at times, I have a God that promised to never leave me nor forsake me. We all didn't have a daddy or a father in the house, and for some, our mothers have gone on to glory, but that's all right. The word recorded in Psalm 27 says that even when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me in. I know it's Mother's Day, but we can't celebrate in this day without celebrating the one in whom made women for this day. All I can say is, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. Here in 1 Corinthians, we see the definition of what a godly mother really is. See, patience is one of those virtues that tests just how strong you really are. And over the years, I have learned not to ask for it because God's got a way that will show you what patience is. And like children, we at times are impatient. Children often say they can't wait to grow up. They say it because they feel like a prodigal child, even a slave in their own home. Children. Amen. Hello. Benjamin. Benjamin Allen. They always are asked to do something. Always being disturbed from the business of Facebook and video games. They feel like free labor. Thinking more highly of themselves than they are. In my house, it's understood you wasn't born with a silver spoon. Matter of fact, you weren't born with a silver nothing in your mouth. (laughs) You work like we work. Amen? Amen. Hmm. But for those who are adults, we always encourage them to slow down. Just enjoy being a child for as long as you can. Because like that prodigal child, the world will one day spit you out. It'll use you, it'll abuse you, and then it'll throw you away. So I'm glad I have a godly mother. When you wait patiently, Psalm 40 says, He inclines to me and he heard my cry. He brought me out of a horrible pit. Mothers understand that all you have to do is look to the hills from which comes your help. A godly mother knows how to pray and get a prayer through. Late at night and early in the morning, all night long and all day too, mama is having a little talk with Jesus and telling him all about her troubles. Patience will help teach you. No, leave that child alone. They'll learn. Patience says that you don't have to go back and forth with them Negroes because you're living your best life. 
And God can fix it much better than you can. Amen. Patience says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Love is kind, doesn't envy, doesn't boast, and is not proud. Mothers have this attitude of Nike, we just do it. We don't do it to get seen, but because our children is in need of us, we do it. We make sure food is in the house because we know they have to eat. When their clothes get too small, or in my case, get too short, it's time to go back to the store because we ain't waiting in the water. <laughs> Love doesn't delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, trusts, hopes, and preserves. But lastly, love never fails. Ask a mother if someone or something will stop them from checking on their children or doing anything for that matter, and I guarantee you the answer is no. Whether they are at home or in the states away, a mother will always see about her children. No matter how you feel about them, whether they get on your nerves or not, they are still your mother. And for some of us today, if we were honest with ourselves, came to church just because mama made the difference. Mm -hmm. Say thank you, mama. Thank you, mama. As women, our work is never done. But I can tell you that even when you think you're done, Titus teaches us that a godly woman and mothers of the church should always be about raising up the next generation. It seems that after the big mamas left, grandmama stepped in, but it's understood that grandmama was some age. Grandmama was of some age. I'm going to let you marinate on that. She lived a while. She saw some things before raising grandchildren, but now it seems that there is no structure being taught. Well, how do I know? Because they don't have time to be at home anymore. They raise the children more like they are their best friend than their mother. No distinction between the children and the adults because they talk the same, they dress the same, they act the same. Titus reminds us that as godly women, we have a responsibility to our community and not just to our families to help raise up the next generation. Verse 3 says that the older women likewise should be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, gossipers, or slaves to wine. Okay, wait a minute now. They didn't say you couldn't have any. It just says don't become an alcoholic. Then say you couldn't have any. Just means you can't be an alcoholic. They ought to teach what is good. And so train the young women to love their husbands and children when it's time to do so. To be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their husbands for those that have them. That the word of God may not be reviled. I ask, what then, ladies, are we doing to help raise the next generation? As the big mamas now, what are we instilling into our young girls and ladies today? The mothers of the church are here to help you to understand that you sit with your legs closed in a dress, that you aren't a busybody, but you sit and still. They teach about not playing in church and not to be talking during church. They pass down wisdom and lessons that help them to get over. They taught you to know that not everybody is your friend. They told you to protect your hips, to protect your dips and your fingertips, and not to give it up to every lot and dotty and everybody, because that's how you get a bad reputation. Amen, somebody. Amen. See, church mothers didn't care about who you belonged to, but rather how you carried yourself as a lady. All right. All right. All right. If caught out of line, didn't care about who you told, but they would correct you right then and there. And as I continue forward, those that are representatives 
Would you please stand? See, it's those mothers like Erlene Gilmer, Sadie May, Mrs. Farrington, and Mrs. Lyles. Oh, I don't see nobody standing. Those like Ruth Joyner, Regina Buchanan, somebody stand for, her, and Molly Ford. It's those mothers like Miss Bailey and Mother Curtis. It's those mothers like Miss Mildred Williams, Sister Austin, Miss Broadnax, and Annie Mae Melvin. It's those mothers like Magdalene Tanner, Dolores Ford. Who else can I call? Miss Evans. I sure can. And if you seem fit, if I didn't call your name, please stand. Please stand. Because I don't want nobody leaving here today not feeling honored or feeling as though they're not getting the respect that they truly deserve. Amen. So now here we are, standing. And for the rest of us, look, this is your legacy. Yes. They started this legacy way before you was even thought of. Amen. But it's now up to us to continue that same legacy. For those that are still here, God bless you. Continue to teach these young ladies. Continue to share your wisdom and your knowledge to help somebody else along the way. You may be seated. Where will we be without our mothers? We have a responsibility as a church to raise up the next generation as God has called us to do. God gave us these gifts and talents to help not just our family, but to be the light, to teach, to nurture, and raise up his church. So celebrate in today, and thank God that he made you to be fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Celebrate today in knowing that God created you to be strong, to be smart, to be kind, to be loving, to be versatile, to be sexy and classy all at the same time. So stretch your stuff. Hold your head high and know that you are a woman phenomenally. And a phenomenal woman. That's me. God bless you.